Here at Martin Middle School in East Providence, Rhode Island, Nick Lethbridge is changing classes along with hundreds of other students. Although this experience is typical for most middle school students, it's still pretty new for Nick, who is 15 and has autism. Um, before that I go to, I went to Seekonk for three or four years. Before that, I was in Somerset for last year and three years. Neither of the schools Nick is referring to are in East Providence. One is across state lines in Massachusetts. Until two years ago, the city sent most students with developmental disorders like Nick, or kids with severe psychological problems, out of the city. Then the school district decided to partner with Bradley Hospital, a children's psychiatric hospital that had been based right in East Providence for 80 years. Bringing kids back to the city would save the district money. But that wasn't the only motivation. The other driver was giving kids like Nick a classic public school experience. That experience includes making friends, says Nick, who is learning to work a copy machine in one of his classes. I want to come here because to make new friends. Maybe I could go to high school someday to make new guys or friends. Just putting students in the same buildings wasn't enough. One of my boys was, you know, m making fun of some of the kids from Bradley. That's Nancy Coulion, the principal at Silver Spring Elementary, another school that opened its doors to students who used to be sent away. And I had a talk with him, and, you know, we did a little problem solving, and he said, I said, what do you know about them? And he said, nothing. So I said, well, come on. We went down to the room. He hung out for a while. He talked to the child, and he kind of is a regular, I think, now. When you're in that same place and you feel comfortable enough to knock on the door and say, Ooh, could we come down and yes. whatever, then it can happen. On the other hand, parents of students already at the East Providence schools chosen to host the students once sent away had to be convinced the partnership was a good idea too. Child psychologist Ann Walters runs the partnership. Definitely a lot of concerns from um, regular education families about what their children would be exposed to if kids with psychiatric disorders or behavioral disorders came back into the building worrying about their children's safety, would they be attacked? Children in the program are rarely alone, however, not even when they walk to class. At lunch, behavioral specialists watch, but the kids can maneuver the ultimate school experience at the lunch line on their own. That alone was worth the months of planning to get the program up and running, child psychologist Karen Camuso tells me in the cafeteria. So when we first opened, our Introducing the students to the cafeteria was a big, a big deal. It's such a typical school experience. One of our students was really overwhelmed by the social aspect as well as the noise. So he started off in the hallway outside of the cafeteria, just listening and waiting. And then by the second week, we got him to come to the first table by the entrance and just sit for a minute. And then within the next week, he was in the middle of the cafeteria eating lunch. It's amazing. So very satisfying. For Education Week, I'm Nirvi Shah.